everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories over the last 24 hours, or in the case of our Monday episode, over the weekend. We actually only have three stories for you today, because one of them is so big, I felt like it was going to take up a huge chunk of the video, enough that, you know, we didn't really need to throw in some other stories and detract you from it. But, that being said, we're going to be talking about the Bayonetta boycott, how it's backfiring, and what the whole deal is with that. We're also going to be talking about Nintendo shutting down servers for one of their core games because of a mistake they made. Oh, and we also have another story thrown in there about Nintendo trying to protect their staff and maybe even pursuing legal actions against some of their customers. Yes, folks, this is a really crazy Monday, so welcome and let's get into the news. And our first story today deals with Nintendo protecting their customer repair service workers from the actual customers who apparently are doing things that Nintendo finds unbecoming and their staff shouldn't have to be dealing with. So here's what Nintendo put out today in an update. When making inquiries about product repairs, please refrain from engaging in behavior that goes beyond socially accepted norms, including but not limited to those listed below. If we determine that such behavior has taken place, we may refuse to repair or replace your product. Moreover, if we view the behavior as especially malicious, we will contact the police and lawyers in order to take the appropriate measures in response to it. Now, here's the list of things they are say are prohibited for customers to do to their repair service workers. Threats, intimidation, or menacing behavior. Insults or degrading remarks. Infringement on privacy. Requests for service beyond social norms, such as requesting free repairs beyond what is covered by warranty. Unreasonable demands for an apology from the company or demands to punish people. Behavior that prolongs the time spent, such as excessively repeating the same request or complaint. Slander on social media or the internet. It's very clear that Nintendo is not happy with the way customers are treating their repair workers who are only doing repairs within the warranty, and if it's outside of the warranty, within whatever the customer is willing to pay. Like if you're willing to pay for a new screen, if you're willing to pay for a new motherboard, if you're willing to pay for a new chassis or Joy-Con repairs that maybe aren't covered by Nintendo's policies, that's up to the customer, not up to the customer to try to convince them to repair it for free and then go on ahead and insult them both publicly and privately. And it sounds like Nintendo's repair workers have been dealing with quite the bit of harassment for Nintendo to make this update and even threaten possible legal recourse. So, hey, what can I say? People are just trying to do their jobs. So maybe let's be a bit more understanding when we're talking, you know, in a, in a customer support sort of way, when we're talking to our customer support, when we're talking to our repair services, maybe we understand that they're just doing their job. So, hey, maybe we shouldn't be so insulting towards the very people that are trying to help fix our issues in the first place. Our next story is about the Bayonetta 3 boycott, and oh boy, has it backfired as Bayonetta 3s are actually flying right now, soaring off the shelves more than Bayonetta has in the past. This is a really jam-packed story, and it deals with a lot of nuance and a lot of not enough information known. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of roll through everything that happened, and you guys can determine for yourselves who or what is wrong, or is it just somewhere in the middle? I'm kind of leaning to somewhere in the middle, but let's dive into what happened. So over the weekend, voice actor Helena Taylor, who has voiced Bayonetta exclusively in the first and second games, posted three videos to Twitter stating that she was made an offer for the role in Bayonetta 3, which she tried out for again, which she said didn't bother her, as it's pretty normal as characters change. That was basically an insult. When she then requested a better offer, she was given one. $4,000 for the entire game, which she insinuated was still an insulting offer. Now, in the past, she's actually done interviews where she stated that it only took four sessions at four hours each at 16 hours, and she actually suggested that it's pretty easy work. This is Helena Taylor's own words. Take that for what you will. Due to her not accepting that pay and declining the role, she went on to call for fans to boycott the game and give that $60 to a charity she chose. She also went on to say that Jennifer Hale, who is voicing Bayonetta now, cannot sign as Bayonetta at events because she is not Bayonetta Rather, Helena is. Kamiya, the Hideki Kamiya, the game's director, responded on Twitter, essentially calling her a liar and dropping a rules warning, which initially Twitter took as a threat and temporarily suspended 
him until reviewed. He's no longer suspended. Now there was also a whirlwind where he temporarily deleted his Twitter and then he came back. It's Hideki Kamiya does a lot of weird things on Twitter. In wake of this, Bayonetta sales began to soar. It was ranked well outside the top 50 in video games on Amazon, but as of recording, it now sits at number 29 ahead of games like Sparks of Hope that comes out this week. It ranks as the 11th best-selling game on that list. Now, for context, they did hire Jennifer Hale, who is regarded as one of the best female voice actors in gaming and has worked on franchises like Mass Effect and the recently released Overwatch 2. Jennifer Hale is highly regarded and sought after. She has a ton of offers on her plate and would likely not have been offered $4,000 for the role, given her base demand is likely much higher as she has a lot more opportunities. There is a rumor out there that both were offered at the same time, and the reason Helena's offer was so low in the game is that the game contains four to five different Bayonettas, and she was only going to voice the original that dies early in the game, meaning her work wasn't actually going to be that large, and Jennifer was always going to be the voice of the rest of the Bayonettas. At the time of recording of this video, I have not been able to substantiate these concerns, but it is out there. For Jennifer Hale's purposes, she has pointed out she's entirely under NDA and cannot speak one way or another on the matter, no matter how she feels about it. Other voice actors have said that the pay is poor, to Helena's credit. Others feel like Helena has not provided enough details on what the role offered to her was. Some who sympathize with her and agree she has every right to complain also disagree with her demand to boycott, pointing out that doing so impacts 100 plus others who did work on the game for years, and that while you can call out the offer, trying to sabotage game sales won't fix anything. While we are unaware of what work Helena has been doing lately, it's notable there is nothing listed on her IMBD since 2014, and every listing since 2012 has only been for Bayonetta, whereas Jennifer Hale has 11 different major gigs just in 2022. So those suggesting Hale and Helena are both top tier voice actor talent doesn't seem to jive. They don't seem to be in the same tier in terms of, well, at least in terms of job offers, that's for sure. I'm curious how you feel about all of this down in the comments below. And for me personally, look, the truth is always somewhere in the middle in situations like this. You can't just believe everything Helena Taylor said. You also can't also just believe Camilla calling her a liar. Somewhere in the middle of all this is what actually happened. And unfortunately, we're probably never going to find out because... Platinum's going to want to sweep it under the rug. Helena Taylor's clearly personally hurt because she felt like she owned this character, whether she actually does or not. She doesn't, but she has a personal attachment, so there is some personal pain involved in losing the character to Jennifer Hale. So it is what it is. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Our last story deals with Nintendo Switch Sports because Nintendo had to shut down the online servers, not because the game's doing poor and there's not anybody playing it, but because Nintendo messed up. They released a new update for the game last week, and that update caused a major bug with online play, so bad that Nintendo said, nope, we gotta shut down the servers. We'll get them back up after we figure out how to fix the bug. As of recording on the 17th of October, remember the game went down on the 14th? Yeah. It's still not up. So Nintendo, hey, I know the weekend came, but you might want to sort this out or at least roll back the update. Clearly, the update must have been a mistake. But hey, I don't know how many players are dealing with. So maybe they feel like they have more time to deal with it. Either way, that's going to do it for our news today. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. I've had a lot of fun and a lot of great opportunities here. Be sure to tune in a bit later today because we do have a review dropping for Sparks of Hope. Woo! Yes, folks, I've been playing that over the last week, and I can't wait to talk about it. We also have a live stream tonight with a Q&A and, well, my first ever live gameplay of the game. You guys are awesome, and I'll catch you in the next video.